Luminar Neo is an alternative software to Adobe Photoshop. The difference? The Adobe package deals range between $120 and $660 per year. Luminar Neo is a one-time payment. If you know my channel, you know that I'm an avid user of both Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. They're my go-to software for the majority of my professional photography work. But if you're just starting out on a tighter budget or simply more of a hobbyist looking to create cool images with just a few clicks and sliders, Adobe might be a bit of an overkill. That's where Luminar Neo comes in. It offers an incredibly user-friendly interface, powerful AI tools, and a lightning-fast editing experience with its latest update. Or so they say. So I decided to put it to the test and see if it really lives up to the hype. Okay, so here we are in the updated Luminar Neo software. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to load in our photo here. I'm gonna select this photo of KT McKenzie from a recent trip to Costa Rica with my friends Liquid Verve and John Snip. So let's go ahead and click add here. And the first thing that you're going to notice is this side panel of presets, which come preloaded into the Luminar Neo software. You can go ahead and experiment with some of these filters in order to create an initial adjustment base to your photo. I'm going to go ahead and skip this and go straight into the edit. So before we do so, let me just give you a quick overview here of the top toolbars that you can see here. We have catalog, which will bring you back to your photos. Once you have your photo selected, this will bring you into presets or edit. And this is where our editing is going to take place. On the side panel here, now you can see a series of tools that come preloaded into the Luminar Neo interface. And then this edits tab, this edits tab serves as layer stacking, just like in Adobe Photoshop. So as you apply effects to your photo from the tools that can be found in the toolbar right over here, including many tools that come standard to most photo editing softwares, as well as some additional tools that are unique to Luminar Neo, these effects will then stack up inside the edits tab right here here and we can go ahead and make some fine tuning or readjustments if need be down the line. And I'll explain to you exactly how that works as we move through this edit. So let's begin with the develop raw and make some initial adjustments to our photo here. Now, first of all, the first thing that I'm going to do is look into camera profile and I'm gonna click Adobe standard. Camera profiles are simply presets or ways in which the software will interpret the different colors and tones within your photo. I'm gonna to stick to Adobe standard since this is what I'm most familiar with. This will keep things very consistent for me for what I'm used to based on my prior editing experience using the Adobe suite. So with that, now I'm taking a look at this photo and I'm thinking it's looking a little bright. So I'm gonna reduce the exposure slightly. I'm gonna bring this to negative 0.15. Now I'm looking at the highlights. There is a little bit of over brightness and overblown looking brightness in some of the areas here. But at the same time, I also want to increase the contrast in the photo to make the photo punchy. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the whites and decrease the highlights. And I'm gonna to toggle these back and forth until I get a nice balance of punchiness all the whilst preserving the details in the highlights. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down to negative, let's say 24, and I'm gonna increase the whites up to a value of 16. So next, I'm gonna come on down to the temperature right over here. You may notice that there is a bit of a warm color cast into this raw photo, so I'm going to reduce the temperature down slightly. Let's bring this to a value of 60. Three, seven. And now I'm going to look into the saturation and vibrance and I wanna pump up the colors in frame and then we'll make some adjustments and fine tune some of the colors specifically. But now broadly, we're gonna pump up these colors. I'm gonna bring the saturation to a value of 26 and let's increase the vibrance to 21. Okay, so I'm still seeing that warm yellow color cast coming through. So I'm gonna click into curves right here, make sure we have blue selected and I'm gonna bump this up slightly to a value of something that looks a little bit like that. That's looking a bit better. So let's take a look at a before and after 
of our effects so far. So we're really bringing out those individual colors as we're moving through here. Now it's time to make some fine tuning to some of the colors in frame. So to do that, what I'm gonna do first of all, I'm gonna click into the title of the develop tab. And what that will do is it will shift all these effects that we just applied to the edits tab right over here. As you can see, it is all loaded up into the develop tab that we just made right here. So we can go back and we can make any readjustments or fine tuning to this effect that we applied at any given point in the edit. Once that's done, I'm gonna click back into tools and now we're gonna click into color to fine tune some of our colors here. So to do that, I'm gonna click into HSL and then saturation. I'm going to bump up the saturation of the oranges. So in the model's hair and also her skin tone. So let's bring that to a value of 40. The yellows, I'm gonna bring them down all the way to negative 56. I will often do this in my edits because I find that the yellows can be a little bit unappealing and distracting of a color. I'm also going to bring the saturation of the cyans all the way down down to negative 100. As you may notice, there is a bit of an artificial and unappealing color to the fencing in the background on the bridge behind the model. So I'm gonna reduce that by bringing it all the way down to negative 100. Let's click into the hue now. Let's make some adjustments to the hue of certain colors. The cyans, I'm gonna bring this to negative 100 and I'm also going to increase the blues to plus 24. All right, let's take a look, see how that's looking. Let's click into the title of this tab. And as you'll see, it has been loaded into the edits panel right over here. All right, let's move on now to the next effect. What I'm going to do is apply some effects specifically to the background distinct from the model. And to do that, we're gonna click into develop we're gonna click into masking. We're gonna click into AI mask right over here. And Luminar Neo will then use its AI functionality to determine what some of the features are within the frame. So as you can see, it, it has determined that there is man-made ground, flora, and human. So we wanna click into human to make a selection of our subject, go back, click into mask actions, click invert, let's show just to ensure that we have the background selected, that's looking good. Now we can click into adjustments and make specific adjustments of the background alone. All right, with our background selected, let's scroll on down to curves once again, and I'm gonna bring this value up in the center very slightly like so and I'm also going to click into the reds and I'm gonna reduce this down very, very slightly like so. Okay, so let's take a look at a before and after of that. So I'm gonna click into the develop tab right here. This will save it into the edits panel. And now I'm going to make a selection and apply some effects to the model alone. So to do that, I'm gonna click into develop. Now this time click into masking, AI mask, and I'm gonna select human, but I'm not going to invert it. I'm going to go straight into adjustments. And now what I'm going to do is increase the exposure of the model ever so slightly to make her pop out that has inadvertently made the highlights and brighter parts on our subject a little bit too bright. We've lost a bit of detail in these areas, so I'm going to reduce the highlights down to negative 34. Also gonna bring down the brightness of the whites to negative 12. Now you may notice that we've lost a little bit of punch in the brighter parts of our model, but we're gonna bring that back using other tools in Luminar Neo, so stay tuned for that. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna reduce the blacks ever so slightly to increase the punchiness and contrast on our subject to really draw the eye to our model right here. And I'm also going to bring up the shadows a little bit so that we can see a little bit more detail on our subject as well. So let's bring that to value of plus 20. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna come on down to adjust and fine tune some of the colors on our subject. I'm gonna reduce the temperature to negative 10. I'm gonna reduce the saturation a tiny bit to negative two. And I'm also gonna sharpen, increase the sharpness on our subject to a value of 30. We don't want to overdo it but that's looking good to me. And now we are done with this applied effect. So I'm gonna click into the develop tab right there. And now what I'm going to do is actually click back into develop one last time to make some final global refinements to the colors in our image. And to do that, I'm gonna come over to temperature. I'm gonna bring this down to negative nine. I'm going to increase the tint slightly to plus three. That's looking good. Let's click now into develop and now some final adjustments to the colors in color. So for that, I'm gonna click into hue. 
Now what I'm going to do is shift the yellow slider away from yellow and towards green to have more of a consistent color palette here. And then I'm going to click into saturation and I'm going to bring the yellows down slightly to negative 25, as well as reduce the cyans further to negative 20. Next up, I'm going to click into vignette and I am now going to apply a bit of a darkening around the sides and corners of our photo. This will help to make our subject pop out a little bit more. It's a depth enhancement technique that I like to use. So let's put that at negative 57. Let's adjust the size here to a value of 59. That's looking great to me. And as a final touch, I'm going to click into face AI in order to bring back a little bit of pop and brightness into the model's face. So let's bring that up to plus 18. Okay. And with that, let's take a look at a before before and after of our applied effects. So as you can see, we really have the model popping out. We have the colors very coordinated and really shining through here. So from here, we can either simply go up to export to export out our photo, or what we can do is we can come on down to actions over here and we can create a preset out of all the editing effects that we just applied. So let's call this Katie Costa Rica X1. And now what we can do is we can simply go back into some of the other photos that we have from the same photo shoot, and we can get a consistent edit across all of these photos. So we simply need to click into presets. Let's click into the preset that we just created and take a look at the results. So as you can see, just like that, we have an entire edit applied to our photo. And if we want to make adjustments, we can simply click into edit right here, click into the edits panel, and we can make adjustments to any of the applied effects that we just made. Let's apply this to another photo here, just for good measure. So click into presets, the preset that we just created. And there you have it. Here's a before and after let's zoom in here. I must say I have been very impressed with the performance of Luminar Neo with this latest update. As you can see, we have very professional results created very quickly. The processing times have been minimal. I would definitely go ahead and recommend this to those who are looking for an affordable and easy to use interface so that you can create some pretty awesome looking photos in no time at all.